Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, <laughs> is it good? <laughs> that one's probably like the best one we have. Let me say, bitch, we're supposed to be tasted, not gulping. That's enough. Oh my god, the trash box in you. <laughs> I'm like a hoe. Like I have sex with the person. Well, you ain't a hoe if nobody know. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This is your first time tuning in. My name is Nikki. And Deanna, and thanks so much for watching. So for today's video, we're going to be doing a get ready with me while we wine taste. We have about, I think, five or maybe six different types of wine mm -hmm. we're going to be trying out today. So that's really fun. It's always fun when you incorporate any type of a liquor that makes things just heightened. Yeah. And we're going to also be answering questions on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I posted a giveaway yesterday where you know it's up to 200 dollars worth of makeup all you have to do is share my post subscribe to my youtube channel and submit a question via comment or dm and a lot of you guys submitted questions so i really mm -hmm. appreciate you for that so i'm ready to jump into the questions and before we jump to the video you guys already know the drill if you have not subscribed to my channel go ahead and smash subscribe hit like and let's jump into the video right. ow were you <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to be getting ready in our normal getting ready fashion. This isn't going to be like a special type of makeup routine video. I'm doing something very simple because we're going to go watch the fight later on tonight. But yeah, I'm just going to keep it simplistic. Mm. Simplistic. Is that a word? Simplistic, yes. Okay, so I'm going to go on with the cover FX acne and mattifying what is that? primer. Just a little oh. primer. Oh my god, we're not trying to promote drinking people, but I got this other home, Pinot. You want to start drier or you want to start mm -hmm. sweeter? Sweeter. Let's we'll start with the Sutter home. Sangria. Sangria. We'll start with red. We can just like, my glass has lipstick marks on it already. Dang, that's all it is there? <laughs> oh no. How do you do it when you like, you be like. Alcoholics would drink the whole thing. Can oh I no, it's it? okay. You, I mean, you can't even really see it, but you like this. <laughs> Like this. You don't need this kind of primer though. I know, but I just want to do it. Give me okay, a primer so I can just do it. <laughs> go like this. And then like block the light is what you have to do. Okay, one. we're gonna go in with block <laughs> the light. <laughs> okay, right there. See how that looks? Yeah, see it? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> That's what's supposed to hold it. I mean you told them so they get it. Mm. Alright, let me see. This I one's kinda sweet though. It is something. Mazel. Mm. It's not too sweet. It looks like a sigil or something. Hey, this is actually not that bad. I haven't. Yeah, it's not bad. Hold on to my reach. So, I posted a little giveaway <laughs> on Facebook yesterday that Deanna did not I help did me post. out with. I okay. did. After like begging. Nope. But, um, gentle reminder. I asked people to just subscribe to my channel, share the post, and then submit a question that they've wanted to ask me or just they wanted to hear us like discuss. And so I saw a few questions rolling in. I just got like the notification on Facebook, but I didn't look at any of the questions. So today, like when I open up my inbox, it's going to be the first time I actually see them. So I need we'll all be surprised to together. Do something it? I can spray this with to dampen it. You have to go put that under water, boo-boo. You don't have like any type of, um, God, what is it? It's a spray I do, I but use. I mean, it's not going to get it wet like you need to be wet. Okay. I, you can, I mean, you can try this. I've seen people use this, but they're like beauty gurus. They really know what they're doing. No, I don't know what I'm doing here. Let me try this <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just mixing two foundations from Maybelline, the Superstay Stick Foundations. I'm mixing the colors Mocha and Toffee. This What's foundation that? is pretty thick. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should have color corrected because the way my skin is set up, like, it's I'm like hella bad lately. Matte and Poreless by Maybelline, the Fit Me. That one is kind of good though. It's not as sweet as it was when I first took a squig. So let's go into questions now that I'm in a slight. Oh, my friend said yes to the dress. I can't believe they did this so quickly. They're like moving so fast. Wow. She also submitted a question. Congrats to you, boo. Did you see the proposal? Uh, somebody proposed to their girlfriend using, um, what's the game? Heads up that we be playing. So it was like, I don't know I how they did that. it. I don't know how he did it, but it, it was, was on Shade Room? Yes. I think I did I see was that. like, get out of here. How did they do that? We're going to go into the first question. Everyone messaged oh, me on, in my inbox. So that means that they want to remain anonymous. 
Yes, they want to remain anonymous. And the question says, do you feel that Facebook friends portray a fake book life? <laughs> do you feel that Facebook friends portray a fake book life? That's that is easy hilarious. One. What do you think? Yes. Yes. If everybody, not everybody, but lots of people do it for the gram and for the book. For the book? Yes. For Facebook and for the gram. Like, what, you think they'd be, like, posting stuff, like, posting things that are fake or just, like... So, I feel like they make their life to be something that it's not. And you know what? Actually, I feel like it goes both ways. I feel like there's people who are a little too transparent, like, that post every little thing on Facebook. And that's why I actually kind of stopped being on there a lot. It used Mm -hmm. to be much more fun. It was just, like... You had to be in college. In college. Yes. yes. Like, that's what it used to be. For. And so I feel like I run into all kinds of stuff. And it's like, I have so many friends now on Facebook just because of how long I've been on there. It's like, ugh, don't nobody got time to, like, go through and delete each and every person because of what they post. I just don't even get on there or I mute whomever. But, yeah, I try to mute people. The mute button is real people. Yes. Like, I love that button. But I definitely think people are out here, like, perpetrating, like, they doing X, Y, and Z. And what they're already life. setting you moving so fast. You're just gonna be sitting here. No, I'm just like using a little bit of powder to kind of smooth so, it out a little. I feel like on any social media outlet or platform, like people can try to portray to be something that they're not, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I also feel like. If the person wants to only share, like, the glitz and the glam and whatever the best parts of their life is, like, that's fine. It's up to the user Mm -hmm. or the people that are viewing that to kind of either judge, don't judge, or just see it for what it is. Like, they don't have to, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like social media, you should only let people in so much. Like, you don't have to let them all the way in. So, I do agree that some people can, like, try to put on and make things seem like they're just so great when they're really not. And I don't believe in that. But, like, if I want to portray, like, the great parts of my life, then I want to do that, too. And I think that... Like, I don't okay. think that people deserve to know Every everything that I'm detail. going through. Yeah. Besides stuff that I want to show them. Agreed. But, yeah. I mean, I do... I feel like on Instagram, like, that's even much more prevalent. Like, people are just... Oh, my God. How many people have gotten pregnant this week or have came out <laughs> that they're pregnant this week? Like, it's ridiculous. Like, and that's the dream that you're selling to little girls. Like, that's what I'll be worried about. That's what I'll be more so concerned about is, like, these women that are, like, my age, younger, older, whatever the case may be. Everybody's getting pregnant. Like, they're not in Keep relationships. Like, there's relationships. There. And little girls are looking up to them, thinking this is a cool thing to do. Like... Next thing you know, we're going to have another baby boom. Like, I just can't deal. Mm-mm. They can keep that energy. Like, you're supposed to have there. substance. Like, it's cool. Like, Instagram is cool for entertainment, but, like, don't aspire to be, like, and you're an a- Instagram model. Like, try to, yeah. try to do something else first. And young girls cannot delineate. They can't delineate that. They can't. Oh. Like. Because if you're, like, a weak-minded younger woman then you just gonna think that that's the life mm-hmm. and that's not the case I swear I saw like four girls this week that were pregnant I'm just like when did y'all get pregnant I've never seen like and not to say they don't have to post their man they don't have to post that but I'm just saying like I've never <laughs> all I saw was like sexy body then all of a sudden you're pregnant too many oops babies it's a lot of oops babies and then the guys be so immature like uh. so that definitely sums up that question yeah and also in saying that i also think that being like the consumer and like looking at other people's profiles don't let that like influence you oh, shit. or don't look to that to be like you know this is the way life is supposed to be you know what i mean like mm-hmm. have a strong mind and just see it for what it is entertainment only please exactly because you never know what the other person is going through you know what i'm saying you never know like these relationships don't be lasting but you think everybody be like so happy and got it together yeah but like no so like have discernment please have discernment i like that you said 
it's for entertainment. Like, let's not forget that it is. It is. It's funny. That's what it's for. Because that's the only thing. I Literally, I get on there for the laughs. I do follow. I, I have cleared my Instagram account because I do use that more. And so, I try to follow, you know, more positive things. I do still follow the shade room. That's. Me too. Love me some shade It's so room. funny. Yes. I mean, literally, they're quicker than the real news. But. <laughs> For real. I don't know who they got on staff. I mean, I think I saw their post about Cassie before they even, before Cassie even posted. I was like, what the fuck? Girl. The real question is, is Jacquez or Jacque the king of R&B? <laughs> mm. I, really, I was going to say, was that really <laughs> a question? Let me see. Do I look too light? Look a little bright. I do look bright. It's like chug this. Come on. Chug, chug, chug. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Impatient. <laughs> Deep throat. <laughs> Here we go. Two lingers. Yeah, we're not finished. We're just getting warmed up, actually. So we're trying the Pinot Grigio Sutter Home, people. Um, I got all Sutter Home brand just because better safe than sorry. Um, but I got a variety of flavors. Deanna can't say the same. Did you watch my Christmas vlog? I started it earlier. Did finish it? I didn't finish it. Friends you be shit fun. people. Watch for the people that really <laughs> Hey, I'm you. honest. I'm honest. I started it. I just didn't finish it. You know what? You but do, first of you all. You do live a fake book life. I don't. I don't. A fake book life. I don't even be on fake book. I mean on Facebook. Okay. Ooh. This, this you know. is dry. You think the one is dry? One is dry. It's, but it's good coming from the spritzy. Maybe we should have went sweet, sweet then came to this. I but think this that will get our palette ready for the Moscato. The, this um, is good, y'all. I like a, I like a medium. The sangria dry. had, I feel like, a little fizz to it. And this That's one does like. Yeah. But see, I feel like that one, well, this one doesn't have a fizz to it because it's not sangria, but it does have kind of like that bite that doesn't make it, like, just too flat. What's that? What are you doing? Camera. What, what are you doing? I'm what putting it on. For what? Like, what are you using it for? To put it on to dark to even out the tone. Okay, I thought yeah. you was using it to conceal. I'm like, wait, no, 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 not go down there. No. I'm like, what the fuck? Shit, you <laughs> rubbed on your cheeks. You said, what did I use? I said concealer, and you start rubbing on your cheeks. I'm like, no. I'm trying to even out. Use what you have, people. <laughs> Someone asked, "What's the hardest part about being married?" I'm glad that both of us are married. We can both attest. <laughs> What's the hardest part about being married? What is the hardest part about being I'm gonna let you start. The hardest, I just got married. You've been married for like <laughs> 10 years. You should start. I don't really have any, cause, Ken, okay, so I'm just saying, like speaking honestly, like Ken and I were together for eight years before we got married. So it's like, we went through the ups, the downs, the hills, the mountains, the plains. Like we went through everything. So it wasn't like we were coming into something thinking like, oh man, we're gonna have to work this much harder. You know, like to us, when we got married, it was like, oh, like a calmness. Mm. Like, wow, we don't, like we've worked so hard for so many years to like- Get to that place. Get to this place and make it official and to get this union, then now it's just like, ah, oh, like roses and butterflies. But I'd still be <laughs> on his ass. Like, don't get it twisted, I'll be watching that shit. Like, you gotta check their phone like, you know, once a quarter. Sure. <laughs> once a quarter? Once a quarter to make sure. No, but for real, like, I don't know when the last time I checked this phone. <laughs> But not be like not not to say that you need to be naive or anything, but like honestly, I don't know. Like I don't like I just be happy. I mean, communication is I'm naming all the stuff that's like really good. Our communication is like just amazing now. Since y'all um, got married, yeah, like it's so much better. Not to say that we don't have our little spats and stuff because we Everybody definitely do. Does, we definitely yeah. do. But I'm just saying like it's more so like okay, let me listen to you. Let me hear where you're coming from. Um, you know, and then sometimes I still, like, react um, precipitously. Like, I'll just say something real quick and not really think about it because i just be, like, in the moment. Mm -hmm. But I don't mean to, like, cause any harm or, like, to be malicious. It's just I'll be trying to get it off my chest. <laughs> you and, so he, and he still be like, here we go again. Like, <laughs> why are you so mean? And I'm like, I'm not trying to be mean, I promise. But the good thing is I think you recognize it. Like, you'll take ownership, like, my bad, I did do X, Y, and Z, yeah. and so I think that's good. Because for us, I think marriage got easier, because, like, when we had first got together, like, um, so when we first <laughs> wasn't, um, we were both more stubborn mm -hmm. than we are now. Now it's, like, we don't have pride, it's, like, whatever, like, we are 100% submissive, 
I don't know, girl. Like, it's not it's like I'm trying to win. I'm hot. Um, so what's the hardest part about being married? I'm sorry, like I don't I don't really have a hardest part yet. So come back to me like in ten years and then I'll give you something. But my girl over here, I mean, I don't know. She has a little more she's a little more seasoned. So be honest. Don't be <laughs> don't, don't be a fake booker. I'ma speak to the person who asks this question because I know that you know, but I'm gonna keep it anonymous. Like you guys have been together, I think, less than two years, less than less than three years, let's put that. I don't know exactly how long. Yeah, I've been at the less than three years, maybe less than that. And, um, you know, he just proposed, and congratulations, so happy. So, like, the main thing for, I think, new couples, I would say, like, the hardest thing is, like, communicating, living together, knowing people's space, like, knowing, you know, the buttons that push them. Trusting is, like, the, like, trusting, finance, security, communication, like, those are the top four things that ruin relationships starting with communication and finance. Like, those are the top. You know what I'm saying? So, I know they'd be like, you know, money, don't buy love and all that shit, but financial situations and strain will put a burden on your relationship. I don't care what nobody said. Like, you can be in... Shoot. Shoot. It can. So, I don't care what nobody say. But anyway, just like, as long as you have, like, transparency, like, you have to trust the person if you do lose the trust, because not saying that you might not lose the trust throughout the relationship, you might lose some trust, trust, um, you know, within that Tom's uh, frame of being married. But you have to learn how to build it again. You know? That's interesting. You do. It is. But isn't it true? Like, you have to learn how to build that trust again because you can't last in a relationship if you don't have trust. And be specific. So, trust does not always have to be like, oh, cheating and I don't trust you. Trust is in various forms like trust Give with finances like oh, yeah. I have to be able to trust you and how you spend the money I need to be able to trust yeah. you and you defending you know me as your wife or whatever you have to be is. like Husband. yes so that's what I'm saying security having my back like being my knight and shining everything like I want to make right. sure that I feel secure with you that that you do have my back like that's the main thing and King used to always say that when we first got together he didn't like, feel like he had to, he no, he didn't feel like that because he felt like, you know, I don't know. He just felt like, you know, in public, maybe I would say something, do something that he didn't really agree with and, you know, just stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he didn't feel like, you know, financially, maybe he didn't feel like I had his back. You know, it was a lot of stuff. But I'm right. saying that's eight years of communication and knowing each other. So, yeah, I've grown from that. And now we can ask each other that question today and it's like 100%. You know, I never had a doubt that Ken did not have my back, so that was always, like, refreshing. So, um, yeah, so what do you think the hardest part is about being married? I keep interjecting because I'm, like, <laughs> so happy. I'm like, I don't know. But I want to be real, too, you know, and, like, say this. So, the hardest thing I would say about being married, and let me give some context to your your viewers. Um, so, yes, we've been together since 2006. Um, basically, we started dating in college, um, and... I feel like, before I can, I guess, say officially, like, what the hardest part is. So, we've been together since 2006, and then we got married in 2011. So, we were dating for five years, and then we got married, and we've been married since 2011. 2018, so that's seven years, seven, five. So, we've been together for 12 years. So, and y'all were together for five years where y'all got married? Yes. Okay. So, one of the biggest things um, that I feel like is problematic in relationships, and and being married, I'll say, um, is A... I don't know how old whoever asked the question is, but, um, and this could just be my own bias, which that's all I can do is give you, I guess, essentially my own bias based on my own experiences is, you know, getting married a little too young, like before you know what you really want. So like age young or like age young together and young. no, just age young. Like you can be 30, 40 and have been with somebody for six months or a year. And you know, because you've been through enough you know relationships to know this is what I want this is what I don't want but if you are younger in age and you haven't developed what it is that you know for sure that you want versus what you don't want what you are willing to tolerate what you don't want to tolerate I feel like you run into a brick wall sometimes if it if you run into things that you're not willing to negotiate on secondly um I feel like can we talk about each topic as you say it because I just want to like give perspective on everything yes. you say. Yeah. Okay, so let me just think real quick. So you said that first of all, you said that if you're too young, mm-hmm. and then you have- that can skew mm-hmm. your vision because you don't really know what you want or what you're 
um, boundaries are your non-negotiables and things mm-hmm. like that. So in saying that, um, the only way you can truly learn your non-negotiables is by problem solving. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is kissing a few frogs, being a few <laughs> Like, you just yeah. don't know because right. you ain't never been exposed to it because all of us are selfish when we go into a relationship. We're all selfish because we have our way of doing things. We have our way of seeing things and nobody can impede on that. Like, we want it to be our way or the highway. So until somebody comes along that can teach you or that you can learn how to navigate those barriers so that mm-hmm. y'all can kind of like um, coexist and be fine with it. And you don't get like your ruffles, your feathers ruffled every time because it took me a long time. Honey, my brother and I are five years apart. And guess what? No, I wanted my stuff to myself. I don't <laughs> want you touching my stuff, my chips, my soda, my yes. everything, my drink. Don't yes. touch my shit. Yes. But yeah, so anyway, I just want to like kind of touch on that because it does make a difference. Like if you see, yes. but some people can find love young because they navigate it when they marry. Like they just navigate they through do. while they marry. So I don't want to say that because some people like young love is a beautiful thing. People that are 16 in their high school sweethearts, just because they're younger doesn't necessarily mean they don't. Yeah. They figure it out together. Again, that's why I said it's very biased because it's my own okay, okay, experience, okay. right? Yeah. So it's like, for me, it's like, from my perspective, from what I've been through, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, right and I feel like, you know, I didn't realize what I wanted and what I didn't want in terms of my non-negotiables and the things that I aspired to have. Because A, number one, my perspective was I was very career focused and career driven at a young age. I wasn't thinking about, oh, I'm gonna be married and da-da. like no, that's that that was not something that was I aspired to have. So for me, I had not thought through X, Y, and Z. For me, I did not date a lot of guys. I had my first love, who I was crazy about. Things didn't work out at that time with us. And so You know, I just kind of moved along, but I was very academic focused, very career focused. So, but I feel you like some people, it's like, oh, they meet their, the love of their life and they they make it work. And they might grow out of love too, though. Like, yeah, some people grow out of love. So it's just, I don't know. It's, it's no right or wrong way. Like really y'all both just have to be open minded and know, sorry, and know that like, whatever you want to achieve in your relationship is greater than like the outside influence is greater than each individual like each of you on your own like you're stronger as a force together type of thing so you know don't some advice let's give advice okay like some hard things about being married and staying together is influences from your fam- your friends whether they're single your family who doesn't really know what lens y'all are looking through but they only view it through one type of lens and just like sharing your problems i mean it's a lot of stuff that can like really go into and we're like young like we're not old by any means but we're just very mature and when you're career focused you that's how you start learning also some of those non-negotiables yeah it's like you don't want to end up settling because you'll always settle for less and less once you settle Mm -hmm. because it's like oh okay well that don't sound that bad I'll go ahead and settle for that. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I did say I didn't want that, but you know what? But you know what happens when you do that? You're not being true to yourself. And I think, okay, so that would be the best advice I would give. It's like, regardless if you're young, middle-aged, whatever. Like, when you realize, okay, this is not what I wanted, to be true to yourself. So, yes, communicate that to whoever your partner is. Like, hey... This is what I expect. This is not what I'm seeing. And so I guess it boils down to communication, which... And learning how to deliver. Because this is not what I expect. This is what I'm seeing. I mean, it's a lot of different (laughs) ways you can say that. Don't say it like that. But it's a lot of different ways. Because I'm working on my delivery for 33 damn years. I'm working on my delivery. So trust me. If y'all need advice on delivery, I'll let you girl. Because I know... How to deliver a motherfucking message. I've been told but the delivery definitely could be But we all though. should be, like, we don't know because we just know how, we know how, like, what our intent is, right? Like, right. we don't mean anything malicious But the it. impact is just different. like, yeah, the way you say things. Like, Ken is all about, he wants to be stroked and baby. Well, can you listen to me? Well, how about this way? Like, he wants me to be very gracious and, like, and that's not me. <laughs> I'm like, mother, why didn't you? I told you on fucking ass. Then she calls me and be like, huh, what's she finna say? Because she better say that's my shit. Like, bitch, then I ask you to post it. It's ready. Duh. No, but like the other she day. She hit me for, with a per, per our conversation. I was like, all right, I'm Nick. My email. All right, I'm, Nick. I will pull a work talk 
dialogue on your ass dialects. I'll pull up work dialects real quick. But I know but this. Look, I know this about her. You yeah, know? so it's like, no, don't nobody, don't take me serious. Like, take me serious when you need advice for real, but like, don't take me serious. Well, she's like, when I be saying stuff. Yeah. I'm funny. I'm a jokester. I'd say things. She's a smart ass. I'm a, yeah, I'm sarcastic. You have I'm to, you sarcastic. have to love that about her in order to be her friend. If you was, don't love that, you're not going to be friends with her. I was just telling Kelby, I think he called me when I was working out this morning, as a matter of fact, when I'm sweating. And we were just talking about how, like, in 2019, we're going to be, like, we not the bad friends, bitch. Oh, like, if you're okay, not a good okay. friend, I got to let you go. Yes. Like, I'm not trying to be overworked and overstressed. Like, mm-mm. Yes. You're not paying me to be a friend. So, um, what did, what did I say? I forgot my thing. Kind of tipsy. <laughs> I know. What were you saying? Oh, yeah. I was like, honestly, I feel you, Kill, because, like, to know me is to love me. And to yeah. be on the surface is to not even understand me. So, like, I need you either going to have to be in or out. Like, yeah. And I don't exactly. like explaining myself a lot. Like, you just have to give me talk shit back. Like, that's the way. I told Ken. I said, babe, if you want me to, like, if you don't like the way I'm delivering something, be like, what the fuck? Like, check my ass. Like, do that. Because that's how I will respond. And he's like, I don't want to put forth all that energy. Poor Ken. Like, he just wants me to be like, oh. So, the other day, perfect prime example of the delivery, right? So, I walk in. I need to do my eyeshadow. Hold on. So, I walked into the house. And I had already texted him, like, before I left. and I was Or texted him when I left. And I was like, hey, they're giving that notices for the trash. Like, please take the trash. Bring the trash in because they're not running today. Hold on. And so I called him immediately, and that's what I said. So I'm like, babe, bring the trash in. He's like, okay, I'll go get it, I'll go get it. So that was like, you know, four-hour window. Four-hour window of opportunity. I come home, and the first thing I notice when I come on my floor is that, like, the trash is still outside. I'm just like, why is the trash outside? So before, like, I had already... Like, I got triggered. Like, things trigger me, but I need to know how to, like, control my triggers. And some people don't. Like, I'm not going to let the outside world see me trigger. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, like, my people, like, can or, like, my closest friends, like, they can see me bother because, guess what? Like, they know me. Yeah. They know when I'm vulnerable. I guess that's part of that fake book. Like, everything go back to fake book life. So, I'm already triggered when I'm walking up to the door. And as soon as I bust in the door with all my gifts, I'm like, <laughs> I thought I asked you to take out the trash. I was like, I thought, I, but I didn't say it, like, that's how he's hearing, like, that's how he's hearing uh, it. I'm, I'm pretty like, sure there was some, some yeah, of that in your tone. It was, but no, he's hearing like, Rawr, but I'm just like being a matter of fact, being very assertive. It's, yeah. Like me coming off assertive is like sometimes too aggressive to him, right? So I'm like, I thought I told you to take out the trash. Like, oh my God, they gave us a notice. And so he's like, he was dead asleep, y'all. Oh, he was and he'd sleep? wake up like bushy, like bushy eyed and what are you talking about? I'm like, they gave us a notice. Like, what the hell? I thought... You know, and so instead of me, like, instead of him being like, what the fuck? Why are you tripping? Like, my fucking bad, you know? Like, that would have, like, shut your face. (laughs) But instead, he just got quiet and started getting emotional and stuff. So I'm just like, okay, look, why don't you just, like, get mad back? (laughs) No, man. (laughs) He was like, no, I don't want to go through all that. So anyway, if it would have went over a lot better if I would have walked in and been like, oh, babe, I see you forgot to take out the trash. They gave us a notice. It's okay. That ain't even me. Like, I don't gotta, I don't even know how to deliver that. I need to go see a psychiatrist. Because <laughs> I won't even know how to say that. Girl. Oh, babe. Or maybe just not even saying, okay, what he will prefer is me for for me just not to say anything and just put the trash out of the back. That's oh, what really? he prefer. Yeah. So oh. he, like, because he doesn't want me to nag or anything I say is nagging because he does 99% of what men do. That's his version. But anywho, but so. But Ken does do, like, a lot he of. He does. And I don't, like, I don't nag. Like, you can ask him, like, we'll call him in here. Babe, do I <laughs> nag you? No, I'm just <laughs> For real, we can do no, Like, no, babe, no. do you think I nag you still? Like, has my nagging improved since 2017? Like, let's be clear. No, no. <laughs> She's like, let's be clear. And he better be like, yes, it has. But he just, <laughs> he want me to have the same energy all the time. No, but here's the, here's the thing. I'm so hot. I ain't gonna turn it I know I'm hot. With, with anybody, but I'm gonna speak on Nikki specifically. Like, if you don't accept her. You gonna check me, boo. How See, you know, man, that's our relationship. We are, but I'm gonna go back to that. But yeah. I'm gonna get back to you because it's it's a yeah, prime yeah, yeah. example of like, yo, like when yeah. you recognize who a person is, right. you have a choice of whether you want to deal with it and accept it, or if you're like, that ain't my type of person, I can't deal with that. And it's, it's up to you to like decide that. So you like, used to love me though, bitch, whatever, <laughs> barely. <laughs> no, but seriously, like if I 
if I was the type of person that was like overly sensitive or just couldn't handle like her personality, we wouldn't be able to be friends. Like Nikki will be like, Nikki will say smart shit all the time. My response will be like, all right, Nikki, whatever. Like it, that will be my response. Like, all right, whatever. When she called me about the freaking Facebook post. Okay, Nikki, bye. I'm just saying, per our conversation. Okay, Nikki. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> like, like she will, she will put, she will, she purposely will do it. Like when she knows you're like, whatever. She's like, oh no, bitch, you're going to hear it. <laughs> you be like, bitch, leave me alone. And that's what I said. Like, get off my phone, Nikki. She's like, I'm just saying, are you going to post it or not? Yes, Nikki. She's like, all right, fine. Bye. Bye. <laughs> like, it's done. Like, and that's what it is. And it's it, like, it don't offend me. Like, I'm not. I don't feel like, like why would that offend you? Like, um, but you stupid. know, some people, I've seen you. Now, you but know. you friends, friends. Like, you friends, know. Friends. You know. There have been people that have been, like, taken aback because of. Yeah, she's a very, she's very transparent and forward. I don't mean anything. She's very forward. She don't mean no harm, right? But she's very forward. So you have to. I don't want to. You have. I don't want to say like a strong personality, but you have to have a certain type of personality. Yeah. To be able to be confident and like knowing like, oh, she don't mean no harm by it. Like it's just Nikki. Like not a weak one. Just don't have a weak. See here she go. (laughs) And this right. This right here is what I'm talking about. I'm just saying. But back to the original question about marriage. I think ultimately what I have learned over the years, um, and I don't know what the future will hold for me, but whomever you want to marry somebody who you feel like is your best friend, okay, at the end of the day, because your best friend is somebody you can communicate with, you can get into an argument with, and even if you may have to take you know a couple hours to yourself, y'all going to come right back in and y'all going to figure it out. Okay, it's gonna be somebody that you trust. You trust your best friend. It's gonna be somebody you can have fun with. You have fun with your best friend. Your best friend is not gonna be somebody who y'all are like just alike a hundred percent. But y'all have enough in common that y'all know how to hang out and be cool and just like sh- chill and shoot the breeze. And then you're gonna also have that person that your differences complement each other. And so there's gonna be things. There's things about my best friend that be like, oh, here she go. But it's like it's. It's minuscule to the benefits of being her friend, right? And that's how it is with all my friends. Nick, I, I don't fool with a lot of people. Like, Nikki's one of the few people that would be like, hey, come over and let's let have her drink. Leave. <laughs> and I will come over like, all right, bet. Like, I don't, I don't kick it with everybody because I don't like to feel like I have to dumb down my personality or sugarcoat things. Like, it just is Thank what God. it and is. You're, it's no exception when you're in a relationship. You need to be yes. able to be yourself. Yes. Oh, my God. Like, if you feel like you're having to change yourself to win a nigga over, a ninja It ain't over, worth it. It ain't worth it. And, and, I, and I, like, it won't, don't get me wrong. Like, when you first meet somebody, the representative is there. The re- mm-hmm. it's, just, it's always there because you just want to be like, the baddest bitch all the time. Like, right. you want to make sure that you reel them in and stuff, mm-hmm. which is cool. But, like, when the dust when you settles. Start, when you start sacrificing certain things that you know that you would have never settled for in the yes. past or before, like, mm-mm. That's when you draw the line. And so, I guess, for me, I personally, for whomever is watching, yeah. didn't realize a lot of things or didn't. Yeah, I didn't realize a lot of things about myself until, you know, late 20s, early 30s. Now, mind you, I am 31. I'm going to be 32. So, you know. Over the hill. All right. I'm just saying. 31. Yeah, getting ready to be 32. So, I'm at a very, I feel like, important phase in my life career-wise and personally. And so, what I'm telling you after being with someone for 12 years is not that, you know, Everybody is not going to have their ups and downs. But there are things that I have realized where it's like I saw, when I look at things hindsight, it's like, hmm, I should have noticed and took taken action way back when. And so now I'm, you know, dealing yeah. with things that I really shouldn't have had to deal with exactly. if I was honest with myself and with my husband before he became my husband and even right when he became my husband. And so, you know, you live and learn. And I guess that's why you have people that end up separating sometimes. Sometimes they get divorced and get remarried or they get divorced and marry other people or they figure out ways to make it work. But they'll do that because you get uh, divorced and get remarried by people the same do. person. I, I've, I saw that um, Terrence Howard. Ter- and on um, I mean, Nene like Leakes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nene oh, yeah, Leakes. That's true. Yeah. People but I mean, it. like, okay. 
Do you think the money played a factor at all? Not saying the money don't be happening. I don't know that. about Terrence Howard. He's a, a interesting character. Going back to how Deanna was talking about, you know, y'all need to be best friends and stuff and don't dumb down your personality. Please don't. If you feel like you cannot be yourself in front of it, don't matter if it's a relationship, a friendship, like, bitch, get out. Yes. I'm talking Run. about Jordan Peele. Get out. Run. Please get out. And don't look back. Not, like, mm -mm. Like, I have best friends and, like, three of them. And two of them I have known, one I've known since fifth grade, one I've known since high school. Like, don't, don't, mm -mm. And it's not too, I don't call everybody a friend. Like, Nikki, Nikki barely made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the motherfucker. I was in the fold. Like, Dude, I'm determining mm. to cut for other ones. Cause I'm just saying. You like, see, I just feel this, like... this right here, this is candid, mm -hmm. normal Nikki and Deanna banter right mm -hmm. here. Never been a basic bitch. The hardest part about being married is when you're not true to yourself. At the end of the day, like Deanna said, even though you understand your non-negotiables, still no. Like, don't lose that when you get married. Because if you, mm -hmm. like I said, it all goes back to settling. Cause settling can be anything. Yeah, the person not making enough money, the person is cheating on you constantly. I mean, it can be a ton of different things. So just make sure that if you really want it to work, you're gonna fight for it. But if you feel like you're getting abused, you know, whether it's verbally, you're getting misused, and the person isn't treating you right, then you know that's just something that you don't need to be in. But you know, I don't believe that anybody should be able to like get away with cheating i know some people say like you know once is the rule like for me i just feel like no and there's various forms of cheating it's not just putting your penis inside another woman's vagina emotionally cheating is worse than so, physical cheating yeah i don't need you talking to nobody like i don't need you the minute you nobody. yeah the minute you confide in somebody emotionally that is when you need you that's when that's a red flag like that's a red flag on either party. Like, and it's probably going to happen in your relationship. You say what? It's probably going to happen in your relationship. Emotionally confiding in. I mean, and like, yeah, like from it, the opposite it, sex. Yeah, and that could be emotional on any level. It could well, be let me just hmm. being too friendly. It could be anything, and it, it probably will happen. But you just have to know to address it head on. Make sure it doesn't happen again. And put your boundaries there because the reason why the guy's doing this because he feel like he can get away with it and that it's okay. Is this bitch on? Is this bitch recording? So, okay. So, back to that point. Um, I'm trying to think from the perspective. So, if somebody confides in a person, I guess, oh, I'm trying to think. Because, like, it has to be, like, if they're trying to find solace or comfort in that person. Because, like, I guess I'm trying to think hypothetically, hypothetically if Devin or Ken, like, if Ken was like, hey, D, Nikki, blah, 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 and I'm like, oh, well, blah, 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 like, I guess that looks different, or if Devin was like, Nikki, blah, 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 and you're like, okay, well, this is what I think you should do, I feel like it looks different than Ken or Devin going to, like, a co-worker that we don't know, like, man, my wife doing blah, 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 X, Y, and Z, she oh, getting on my no, no. you know what I'm saying, like, I, I guess it, that... When I'm thinking of confiding, I'm thinking, like, you want to some, you know, that I don't know that, you know, could be trying to make her yeah, move. Yeah, confiding on that level is definitely disrespectful. Because, right. A, bitch, the only people that's going to know about what we're going through, ups and downs, is going to be me and Ken. Right. And maybe, like, a friend that you really trust. Like, literally, I'm, I'm like, this is One. so crazy to me, my perspective. Because I feel like the person that I can confide in and go to about my relationship issues, communication issues, anything, mm -hmm. doesn't even have to be like your best friend because your best friend may have not experienced the things that you experienced right. or may not even be in that place to like answer those questions. So their opinion, although it'll, it's like none bias, it'll just, it, it doesn't, it weigh won't have any value. It, yeah. It doesn't have any value and it doesn't hold the same way as someone that you're really close with that's married or that's been married for a long time. It's gone through the same thing you've gone through. So find that one person, one or two key people that are married, that are objective, mm -hmm. and that are experienced because those are people that you can really go to and talk to. They don't have to be your best friend. I'm telling you. No, they, can they be, don't. They can be like, if you can go to a therapist and tell a therapist you're business, you that can works. go to... 
you can go to a stranger like a friend and you just a co-worker i mean you can that's the thing yeah but if you if your man is going to a female co-worker you need, you need to or you're a female going to a male co-worker that. yeah like that ain't gonna i'm just you i'm just keeping it one that. that ain't gonna fly Let's try this one. And then we go to the next question because we have strung that question. Now, all you got to do is ask the bitch about her relationship. Right? We got all the answers. Let, let me tell you. Don't get me started. I need a whole glass of a whole bottle. We need we needs bottles to go through. She can't pour Save some for me. <laughs> this is rosé. We need oh, yeah. some Bruce after this. This shit is getting drier and drier by the month. Oh, that's sip. dry? Let me see. I yeah, rosé is, is dry. Sip. Okay, okay, let me check another question. Check another question because I had a That was a good people. one, girl. You might just win the giveaway for that one. That was a good one. Uh-huh. And the next question is from one of my good friends from back in the day. Hey. Do you feel... I'm sorry? I'm going to throw this one away. Oh. Do you feel like Paris Hilton influenced Kim K and taught her how to be a socialite? Wait, what? <laughs> I had to think about the question. Okay. I pee, girl. I'll be right back. How is she gone? No, I'm not going to talk shit for real. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the whole, um, relationship thing. Um, one thing I'm gonna say specifically, one thing that I do, um, love and admire about Nikki and Ken is that, and this is why I spoke on, you know, the person that you're with needs to be, you know, somebody that you consider a best friend. Um, and Nikki will have her opinion nobody gives a fuck but um at the end of the day when you when when you're with somebody who you have a genuine friendship with that you feel like you know no matter what you know you're going to keep that person in your life it's easier to work through trials and tribulations because everybody's going to go through different trials and tribulations and as you evolve as a human being as a woman as a man your needs, wants, tolerance for things is going to adjust and shift. And so when you have someone who at the root you are best friends with, I feel like you are able to overcome the different challenges that come with marriage. Now, with Nikki and Ken, one thing that I do love about their relationship and that I admire is that they kick it like best, like how me and my best friend kick it. Like they are friends they have their problems like she said and their little gripes here and there but at the end of the day they kick it they enjoy and look forward to quality time with each other and i think that that's what's important and so switch because i gotta go to the bathroom too (laughs) i'm gonna go back so i can be verbatim because bitch done hit an emotional cord (laughs) can't even talk She, she hit a nerve do you feel like Paris Hilton influenced Kim K and taught her how to be a socialite? How to be a socialite? Paris okay, Hilton. so a couple of different vantage points on this one. This is all you. Back in the time when, you know, Kim K was coming up and Paris Hilton was lit with Nicole Richie, like it was popular and it wasn't uncommon to have like the next big person being photographed or filmed with a star that was present, right? So the fact that, you know, Kim K was always seen with Paris was like, okay, Kim must be like the next big thing that's coming up because she's being photographed with Paris. Who is she? What is she? So yes, I do believe that Paris Hilton's clout per se um, definitely helped Kim get to where she started, I won't say where she is today because, you know, you're only as good as your first 15 minutes. And it has been proven that they've gone quite a bit further than anyone has ever thought. And they have, like, the longest-running reality show on TV. So, with that being said, I do think Paris Hilton definitely has some influence on Kim K and her celebrity. Um, Yes, I do think that Paris Hilton taught Kim K how to be a socialite in the respect of, you know, being out in public, catching the cameras, always having people wanting to know like what you're into, what you're wearing, where you're going. I mean, that's a that's what a socialite is. A socialite is having money and being popular and being on the scene. Uh, Kim K her 
Kim Kardashian West. Let's not hyphenate. Her dad, you know, was very popular. You know, he was on the O.J. Simpson trial. So they had their own clout, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think that Kim K was known for being a socialite more than she was known as being, like, the interior closet design person who did celebrities' closets and, like, revamped their wardrobe type Mm. of thing. So, yeah, I mean, we all help each other. That's what women empowerment is about, so... That's for sure. Do you have thoughts on that? I mean, you can't absolutely not, all of a sudden, girl. Because that is not my mm. that is not my lane. I stay in my lane. Yeah. So I mean, Paris Hilton is great. She was at the Christmas party the other day. I was there. Were you there? What's tea? <laughs> okay. Are you finished? Oh, you're not finished. Okay. I'm done. You done with your makeup? Oh, oh right. I mean, I got makeup. Yeah, I think so, girl. Did you do blush? I oh, see blush. I didn't blush. Is this blush? Bitch, I'm gonna take shortcuts. I mean, What's the key to surviving a marriage? Don't take shortcuts. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, hi, hi, Nicole. I have a girlfriend that comes off a little selfish. I love her a lot, but sometimes she don't see how her actions or words come across as self-serving. How can I get her to notice her actions before it, before it do it? And how can I talk to her about it without her getting defensive and starting a spat? Yeah, it says, she seems a little bit selfish. Her her words and actions come off as like selfish, self serving, I guess, like better than others. And how can Ooh. I get her to notice her actions before? Like how can I get her to notice what she's doing without her being like defensive about it or like how can I get her to submit? John Doe. So basically the girl is coming off as selfish. With people in general is what I'm gonna assume. Him and maybe Him. other other people around her. I think, like, with people that... Sometimes people can be misunderstood, right? Because, like, I feel like I can be misunderstood. Tone. It's the tone. Yeah, so I think, like... But the thing is, the person, the girl, has to also learn that her tone is affecting her significant other. Because, obviously, she doesn't know that it's affecting her, so so she keeps doing it. So, he has to communicate that. So, yes, but in saying that, like, his delivery has to be that much more gracious Mm -hmm. and he you shouldn't have to walk on eggshells like don't get me wrong you should have to walk on eggshells but to get past that wall like okay this is what i think about when i think of getting past barriers right like at work we have adversaries right Mm -hmm. so in order to get past those adversaries or just people that are like coming at you all the time and you feel like it's just like in your way and you don't feel like it's like a teamwork environment you have to kind of, like, play the game. Like, you have to stroke their ego. And when I say that, you you need to be genuine because you don't want to come off as fake. But you have to kind of, like, overly compensate by giving compliments or always always make them feel like that they're doing a good job helping you. When you may not 100% feel that, but to be, like, if, so let's play a game. Okay. If you feel like you don't like somebody at work, they, like, are your adversary, they always against you, they always have something to say, you feel like they don't look out for themselves... But you have to interact with them. I, I'm emailing you, right? We don't get along because okay. you feel like I'm just annoying. Sorry. I'm emailing you. Hey, Deanna, um, I noticed that you didn't mark the... I noticed that you didn't mark the workbook completed. You left it as, you know, active. It needs to be complete. When do you plan on doing this? How would you respond to somebody when you want to get past that wall? Because me, I have a tone in my email. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Hey, Nicole, thanks for catching that. Um, exactly. Yes. You got to make them feel like they did something yes. right. Thanks so, for catching that. Mm-hmm. Um, my thoughts behind it when I initially left it unmarked was due to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. However, I do see why you may want it exactly. to be marked completed. Exactly. Therefore, you know, in the future, um, I'll be sure to mark it completed. Thank you for your diligence. And both. You do yeah, have to, you like, have stroke, to stroke it, is what I'm little, saying. Because and then sneak in the, hey, by the way, because right. you've already stroked their ego, so they feel like they've done something. Because your response was so, like, oh, my God, thank you. Like, mm-hmm. that's how I'm reading it. Like, thanks for thanks for catching that. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Not thanks for catching that. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Yeah. Like, that makes me feel like I did something right. Yeah. And then, so I'm just like, okay. 
you know, and then I might reflect like, oh, maybe that wasn't necessary what I said. You know what I'm saying? So I because bring, I explain like this is why exactly. I, this is my thought process behind it. So but now, thanks anyway for letting me I understand know. your thought process, mm-hmm. and now we just we're better. So I bring work yeah. home a lot, and when I say I bring work home a lot, I don't mean like things that happen at work, but I bring like my verbiage, I bring my temperament, I bring like. The things that I've learned, because, like, just in that instance, like, the reader is the most important person. When you read an email, you want to make the first sentence, the first few words, the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Then everything else is kind of, like, secondary. Mm-hmm. You want to do that with your significant other, too. You want to make sure that you're you're coming off to them in an appeasing way to where they're not offended. They're not being, you're not being offensive. They're not, they don't have to get defensive. So even if the person, if, like, the woman in this case is the adversary, because she's the one that's defensive. She comes off self and right. Adversary? Is that what? Adversary, right? Like adversaries, yeah. Isn't that a word? Did you use that adversary? It's no, ad- I said I said what I said. If you will know like adversaries meaning like things, like the adversary at work. Oh, not like, okay. Okay, like I am the adversary. Right. Okay. So, okay. I'm the so you like, think if it, you have adversaries at work then this is what I'm Oh, okay, okay. Like I'm that so the woman is the adversary. Yeah. The woman is the adversary. <laughs> Blame it on the penal. So you just want to make sure that if she's doing stuff that she, you feel like she's self-entitled, self-absorbed, defensive, whatever the case may be, she's not really privy to that. So whenever mm-hmm. she says what she says, and like I talked about earlier, when you've been in a relationship for a long time, you learn how to be submissive, the pride is out the door. It has to be the same with this. And even though you feel like you might be a broken record, you have to keep using the same tools. And you know what's so funny is that um, the fact that whomever this person is that sent this message sent the message it oh, that's your kid. <laughs> okay, that's it lets good. me know that um their personality is the type of personality that can like that can stroke the ego like that's what I get from it so it's like okay me you too, recognize they just don't feel like it yeah so you recognize that this significant other is doing x y and z and so I feel like you can very much so stroke their ego and that gets them to a space where they may be more receptive to the feedback. And you have, you have to, give to work it, on how they can be receptive. Exactly. Because if they feel like you're being combative, then they're, they're just going to close up. Yes. Because yes. their their nature is already to be like a mm. debater. Exactly. They want to they argue. So you have to find a happy medium and mm-hmm. something that can couple with their... Aggression. So one of my strategies, like, I will ask, um, like, why do you, th- well, I asked this today specifically, but it was like, why do we always get into arguments? And it went from, it went from literally like, well, because you do blah, 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 blah. And it was like, well, maybe, well, wait, but wait, right, wait but wait, here's what happened. It was like, well, because you, da, 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 da. And it was like, and well, you know what? I, I just was quiet. I didn't say anything. And it was like, well, So your simple I question do. was why you always feel like we argue. And they was like, well, you? It started with, well, you. And then it went from. Don't ever say you, y'all. Yeah. But here's what happened. <sighs> it was like, I feel you. Da, 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 da. And it was like, well, you know what? I, I just, I didn't say nothing. When I said I didn't say nothing, I said nothing. I was like, hmm, interesting. And it was like. Well, you know, now that I think about it, I feel like I do blah 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 X Y and Z. You, you know what? I apo- yes, literally, it was like, you know what? I apologize because I feel like I do X Y and Z, and it causes this, that, and the other, and then that's how. Oh, shit. It's okay. It wasn't like the game though. It wasn't like the game where it's like, okay, because you said this. Let me no, just- no, no. It started off as your the initial. It was like literally an impulse response, like. Oh, you know, How do you, you deal do with blah, 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 blah. responses because I feel like that could be the girl in the situation. Okay, she could so be the one the that's one... like just spurting out. Yes, and the, uh, yes. So for me, so I have taken the approach of silence. So I'll just sit for a couple seconds. You'll be surprised how sixty seconds of silence will cause the person on the other end, if you're intentional about it, will cause the person on the other end to start talking more. And they'll they'll just keep talking because it's it's like an awkward silence. But I'm purposely doing it. Like, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to sit here. I purposely do it. Like, he's like, da 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 And I'm like, hmm, interesting. Hmm, okay. And the the true, the the me at my core, it's like, how you going to say da 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 But then it's like, mm-mm. Well, you're bigger than that. Exactly. So I'm that's like, how, that's why you have to learn people and yes. learn who you are. Because you want to know that yes. you're 16. When you green in a relationship, you're not going to know which, how to mm-hmm. restrain yourself. Mm-hmm. So I just said, I was like, mm, interesting. 
And literally, so a few that. seconds later, it was like, That's like a sales tactic, I think. <laughs> Probably so. Yeah, because I feel like I'd be over talking. I'm like, I'm not going to stop over talking. Because mm-hmm. that salespeople, like when they get in the office with me, they always like want to ask questions. They ask open ended questions. So now that I've taken the classes, I know like how to just be like X, Y, and Z. But I try to say X, Y, and Z without coming off cold because it's like oh, I'm okay. asked, asked and answered. Hashtag asked and answered. Yeah. You know? But if I'm not carrying on the conversation, it's like, well, are you being cold or dry? I'm not trying to be. I'm just trying to answer your question. If so I when there's talking, that brief moment of silence, years. one of the things that I do is I'll ask, so tell me, what are you thinking about right now? Like, tell me what your thought process is right Lam now. Brusco. Next. <laughs> Lam Brusco is my thought process. But, so, but seriously, this happened today on the way here to Nikki's house. You said, Literally. why do you think we, But you were nice about it. You were like, yeah, I was thinking? like, why is it that we argue so much? Maybe you should have had this in face-to-face. Face-to-face is also key. It is. It, we were on first time. Interaction is but key. That's why they face. came out with the movie Bird Box. Because we yeah. always on the phone. We want to text. Like, no, bitch. We need to be face-to-face. So I, I feel stuff. you. I feel you. Okay. But anyway, so did it end okay? Like, Yeah, it ended well. Like, literally, the end result was it went from just being like, oh, well, you one minute you this, the next minute this, and you this, you that, till it was like... You know what? I feel like I hold I'm holding you to like this expectation that's unrealistic. Like I'm taking all this good about you and not giving you the opportunity to basically be human. Oh, let me open it. Now I want you to go get the lamb brooch go. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did you give me this? Can you unlock the computer? I'm gonna take a brief interview. No, you do it. Okay, yeah, get up there and shit. <laughs> silence is golden. Sometimes. A few moments of silence. Where did this come from? You gave it to me. Oh, bitch, I steal my stuff. No, you gave it to me. I'm an honorary bridesmaid. Don't pick one. So, Deanna being that, you can tell Deanna's so smart. Like, an intellect. First of all, she's being, her she's depth being of knowledge fucking, is fucking beyond. A jerk. She doesn't want to have to reduce her personality. She's a jerk. You know, and to fuck the person her. she's dealing with, if that's in a relationship or a friendship. This is what I so feel about my, her comment. My beautiful friend, you know, <laughs> we were supposed to both, you know, hold up our end of the bargain. Supposed to go and get wine, you know, different. I did it on purpose. Different flavors of wine, different types, you know, red, white. Dry, I wanted us to try sweet. two different versions of Lambrusco. You know. So she, I just didn't realize she's like been raving it. about these two, you know, for about a week or more. And she's like, yeah, I got two different types, you know. One is, she kept, she, I think she was trying to say not a rose, but she kept saying Stella Rose. She was saying no tea. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck this is. She kept saying Stella Rose, though. No, I was going to get, um, no, so I was going to get the mini Stella Rose. Bitch, don't try it. We have Lambrusco. Yeah. Company that Lambrusco made is the type of wine, but right. she got two different makers. Exactly. With the same exactly. But she thought Lambrusco was the maker, and then she got two different types of wine. But she really got the same wine with two different makers. Just open one. Because y'all might be asking, like, well, why are you trying two different brands with the same type of wine? Right. Then y'all asking so many questions. Y'all need to ask the right questions. Well, this is like a wine tasting video, so we just like wasted a few bucks on. How can I get this? Oh wait, that means it's gonna cork. Yes. Let me see the wait. other one. <laughs> no, this one isn't. Here, do this one. You just spit all my fucking mouth. My Are you sick, bitch. No my fucking microorganism got me fucked up. I'm not sick. Seriously. Okay, which one is this? Which brand is this? It's the same fucking wine. You Shut know, up. Right? It is reunite. And like my palate has got to adjust to something different. Reunite. Are you sure that's it? I'm not. Okay, well, you correct me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> 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 Bro, <Bruh. laughs> mm. is it good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that one's probably like the best one we have. I'm saying, bitch, we're supposed to be tasting, not gulping. That's enough. Oh my god. The trash box in you. <laughs> so someone said. Um, okay. Okay, my first question, I'm gonna have two. If you, what? If you started dating a woman and a month later found out she used to be a hoe, would you continue dating her? Hashtag hoe into a housewife. Wait, what? Ooh, 
That's a lot of bush. Send me okay, your so if you were dating someone and you found out they used to be a hoe, y'all in their business from back in the day. Like, Ooh. why are you in their business anyway? Would you continue dating them? I think is what they said. Oh, do hashtag they, hoe to a housewife. Do they have an STD? I mean, no, I'm it's not. Like, if they don't have an if STD. If they have an STD, but you've been dating them and you found out they used to be a hoe, like, what? Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So they've already been dating them and they found out after the fact that they were a hoe? We know that listening isn't your greatest asset. Bitch, you got I mean, so let's put this in, because I'm like, this question is like for a man. Yeah. It's kind of weird. So, like, if you was dating a dude, I mean, I've been dating some hoes, so. I don't know. I might not be a good advocate for this one, because, I mean, you got to be able to change that man. You know what I'm saying? You can't just be sitting there and dealing with the same shit that they've been used to. That's the reason why you come along and you're like, okay, this is going to change. Like, I swear, when I was in high school, like, my first boyfriend used to be, like, the biggest slut bucket, like, of slut buckets. But, see, okay, and people that change, shit, And the girls, though. but the girls were trying to come for me, you know? People like, they were trying to come for me. And I One had to let them know, friends. like, no, nah, bitch, we different. It's different now. He was a hoe, and we became very good friends over the many, many years. But did y'all date? We did, and we did things to each other that were not cool. What, like bad things? Yes, we okay. we we did some bad things to each other. Um, so but you didn't hold back. A hoe. Like I have sex with the person. Well, you ain't a hoe if nobody know. <laughs> you know, we did some things to hurt each other, basically. But yeah. we got past that, and we are very good friends. And he has evolved, just like I have evolved. Okay, but the end of the, day, the end, at the point of the question is yeah, that's, not, that's not the point, right? At the point of the question was like, what what do you do at the end of the day with a hoe? I mean, people change like they I do. Think everybody also they do. They wild also at one point. People like, grow, you know. So okay, so she used he or she used to be a hoe back in the day. Are they a hoe now? Like what the f- right at the end of the day, like. You should be asking. You better be glad. You better now. hope that they was a hoe back then and they ain't a hoe now. Because if they was a hoe back then, they got their hoeing out the way. If they wasn't a hoe back then, they might be ready to be a hoe now. So you better be hoping that they was a hoe before y'all got together. Cause then you got it. You got it made. Cause they got their hoeing out the way. But they still got them whole tendencies like in the bed. Yeah, shit. but they didn't get tired of it. More than likely, don't get tired of the whole tendencies in the bed. I need you to be a freak. <laughs> That's what I want you to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nobody see this. It's they small. can't. It's too small. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> The past doesn't. Yeah. I don't think the past really affects anything. Because you know, when we young, you know, we do shit that. But what I don't need. This is the key. This is the key right here. If you dating an ex hoe, mm-hmm. you need to make sure this mug is in shape to where when y'all go out, you don't get disrespected. Because the only thing that will make oh, you yeah. upset is like when the next person come on and be like, "Hey, Rashawn." Yeah. Like, bitch, don't do me. True, true, true. That happened to me one time. Like, let me tell you about it. Ooh, so, one time. That was so gross. So, me and Kim. <laughs> you just back two minutes ago. You were sound like a man, though. Mine was like cute. <laughs> bitch, no, it wasn't. It was just as gruesome as mine. Get out of gruesome? here. Yeah. Gruesome, yes. So, we were out at a day party one time, and um, it's all about the delivery once again. But just. A girl like me, like, I'd be ready. When it comes to my man, like, don't fucking play. Don't say shit. Don't look. Don't spit. Don't speak. Don't say spaghetti because <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Like, I'm for real. Like, if you know him, just wait till I go to the bathroom. Don't say spaghetti. Wait till I go to the bathroom because I don't have time. No, so, no we were um, coming out. We're coming out to a little day party, you know, walking with me and my homegirl. I'm with my homegirl. And this girl leaned on a car. And I guess it was like she was with some guys or whatever. And Kim was walking a little bit ahead, which is why you let your nigga walk behind. My daddy always told me, like, the man's supposed to walk behind. Really? Not for good reasons, though. My dad used to walk behind because he was looking at girls. Oh. So anytime Kim be walking behind, I'd be like, walking front, nigga. What you doing? Exactly. <laughs> you can up here. But, um, so she was leaning on a car, and she was like, she was like, hey, Kim. But I was behind, so she couldn't really see me. And my homegirl was behind. She was like, Ken, she was like, oh, the last time I saw you, you had a whole fiance. You had a whole, like, real big motions, like, 
big swinging movements, no like big gestures. I know my friend. Let me know. I was like, excuse me. I said, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so she like, oh, I'm just, oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, he got a fiance. He got a fiance. What's tea? What's popping? What you so need to I'm know? Embarrassing Ken. She ain't say nothing. She better not say nothing. If she say something, I'm gonna be questioning what the fuck y'all got going on. Why is she double talking? She following up. If I talk, that means everybody else need to be quiet. Bitch, I know that's right. That's, that's so, why I fuck with her. Still a whole like running topic whole move. of our thing. She got a whole fiance. Don't know, bitch. Like she, your movements are too big. Why am why are you so dramatic about? What he had. And the way you said a whole fiance, that was a little bit condescending. So I'm just offended from multiple vantage points. <laughs> so I just need to address them all right now. I'm offended. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm First offended. of all, if you don't have a friend like Nikki, you're lacking, okay? <laughs> like, you're lacking. Because Nikki no will shade, gas no you. <laughs> She'd be oh, like, bitch, it. fuck that. That bitch was throwing shade. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, this video is gonna be like two hours. <laughs> like, and I haven't done my lips yet. What lips are you doing, bitch? I'm just doing some dry. lip gloss. Fuck that. Just mm -hmm. I'm just some lip gloss. It was B Y O M. Bring your own makeup. God damn it. You wanna watch the. Oh, you gonna have drinks? Who's your friend you wanna have drinks with, bitch? You do not have any friends. You wanna have drinks with? First of all, he's married. Him and his wife. We're gonna have drinks. How many of us like a couple couple? Because Devin's supposed to be taking the ride somewhere. No, the answer is because you have kids. No, seriously, Devin told Dora he would take her somewhere. I know, and Devin don't like the dude. Okay, is Devin your mom still here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Devin is lame. <laughs> okay, one more question. And See how she done. really feels. See how like, she really want to go hang out with the kids. This is date night. This is the right. This is supposed to be the time where I hang out the most. We just had this conversation two questions ago about how spit it out. <laughs> <'Cause> I <remember. laughs> I'm figuring things out right now. So those of you that are you didn't explicitly say that you were well, just like, I'm well, telling y'all, I'm, I'm figuring things out. I'm figuring things out. First of all, the question I had one the with moral Devin. of that story the was the question I had one with Devin. <laughs> <laughs> cut! 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 <laughs> cut! Cut! I'm not cutting shit, bitch. <laughs> We're figuring things out. Hopefully regardless of the video, regardless of where things go, he will always he is has has and always will be a good father to our children. Oh God, that's like the death intro right there. Like regardless of what happens, we're always gonna be fine. We're gonna co-parent. <laughs> okay, first channel. of all, this is not gonna be explicit on my channel, bitch. You say that shit for Doctor Phil. This is not happening here. Oh, so you gonna edit it? I don't know. I don't want my friend watching this. That's my friend. Kim K was like, she be drawing in her little cupid's bow, so I'm gonna do mine like that. No. She said, How do you stay so fabulous? Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A question just for Where do you shop the most? You fabulous too, don't do it. Unfortunately, until they start paying me, and that's it. Like, is that wrong? No. Is that okay now? Yes. Okay, so she said, What do I do to stay so fabulous? You don't wanna like listen to this? <laughs> I don't know, bitch. <laughs> she ain't got no kids. Like, the fuck? If she had kids, it might look a little different. That's Why all I got for you. It might look a little different. What might look a little different? Oh, don't be hating. What's gonna look all different? All day hating, because I got kids. So I guess I'll say skincare. So for me, I just feel like I feel the best, like, when I look my best. And when I feel yes. like I look my best, like, some people, like, this thing is trendy. Like, this top I have on is trendy. But I don't feel sexy in this. I feel trendy in this. Mm. I feel my best and feel confident when I'm sexy and my like, I have on a, a rosy mauve eye or a brown smoky eye. And, like, oh. my midriff is showing. My butt is popping. Like, that's what makes me. And people might be like, oh, why do you need to show yourself to be confident? Or da -da? It's not about that. Like, I'm confident, but I feel my best. Like, I just feel like what's tea you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and you can be sexy and everything like, i'm gonna walk up in the club tonight with this on and be like what's up you know what i'm saying and you're gonna get that look regardless <laughs> you know what I'm but i'm just saying like working out yeah eating right like when i eat right and i work out mm -hmm. i feel like 
I'm achieving life's biggest accomplishment. It's no, like when I, I come, when I work out really hard and I come home and I eat veggies only, or if I eat like a salmon and like veggie something, I feel like amazing because I feel like I worked and I burned so many calories, only in took like a fourth of those calories, so I'm lit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I mean, just like where I shop the most, like they're not paying me enough to disclose, but I don't know. Like it doesn't take much for me to feel. Like, fabulous. Sex. But when I wake mm-hmm. up in the morning, I feel like a fucking regular snake little ugly ass <laughs> bitch. Like, I do. I be having my fucking do-rag on. Like, not a do-rag, but like a bonnet. I got... First of all, I wear a scarf and I wear two bonnets to yes! keep it tied down so I don't sweat. And then, like, I have glasses. I wear retainers. Like, I be looking busted and disgusted, y'all. Like, follow me on fucking Snap and you'll see, like, the real tea because this... Is a facade. This is the Facebook ah, fake life. This is the Facebook. This is the Facebook. This is the Facebook yeah. fake life. Like, she's showing her. Well, guys, that's the. <laughs> Thank you guys for the questions. Um, it made for a very interesting video. It yeah, did. It was good to talk about some of those things. I, I will know. admit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see us do another Q&A or see me do a Q&A, let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That means that my videos will be more frequently in rotation. And until my next one, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching.